If you got your Bible, would you open it up to the book of Matthew? Give our worship team a big hand today. Thank them for this wonderful worship. <laughs> Matthew 6, 9, which is our key passage for this series, Teach Us How to Pray. As Jesus is delivering this famous sermon now that we know that he gave, as he's delivering this sermon, someone asked him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And he answered them by saying, when you pray, pray in this manner. Therefore, in this manner pray. He said, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day, this day. Everybody say this day. Yeah. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom remember we just sang it yours is the kingdom yours is the glory yours is the honor yours is the power and the glory forever and ever amen and everybody would say amen, amen. our focus as we've been focusing on a different part of this prayer that is teaching us something about how we are to pray our first week we we focused on our father who is in heaven our second week, we focused on your kingdom come, your will be done. Today, we're going to focus on give us this day. Yeah. Give us this day. Everybody say it again with me. Give us this day, our daily bread. God is, when we see this part of the prayer, we understand immediately who our source is. God is our source. Everything that is good comes from God. He is the father of light, and I don't know if you know this, but scripture tells us there's fruit that light possesses, and the fruit of the light, what light produces, in other words, what light produces is everything that is good, right, and true. That's the fruit of the light, everything that is good, right, and true. So everything that is good, right, and true flows from the father of light. In whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. There's no darkness in him at all. He is a good God. And he is our provider. Somebody say he is our provider. He's our source. He's our strength. Our help comes from the Lord. I can turn my eyes today towards him, knowing where my help comes from. But, but because my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Everything that I need, I find in him. Everything that I possibly could ever need, want, or desire is in him. So I say, give us this day. Our daily bread. With expectation that all of my needs are being met through Jesus Christ. How many of you know when you are in a relationship with God, you don't have to worry about tomorrow? Tell somebody next to you, don't worry. Be happy. Come on, tell somebody else, don't worry, be happy. How many of you remember that old tune, that 80s tune? Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry, be happy. We don't have to worry. We can have joy. We can have great joy. We can have great hope. We can have great expectation because God is the God not only of our yesterday, he is the God of our today, and he is the God who holds our tomorrow. I can expect something good today. I don't have to worry about where things are coming from because I know who my source is. My source is not my job. My source is not those people who are around me. While I can appreciate all those things and those people that are in my life, I know who my source is. The source of my joy, the source of my peace, the source of my healing, the source of my hope, everything that I need comes from the Lord and God is, say it again, he's good. Every good and perfect gift is from above and it's passed down from the Father of life. I can expect that today. Tell somebody again next to you, say expect something good. Now say expect something good today. Give us this day. So this part of the prayer 
is this part where we understand who our provider is, who our source is. The one that we are expecting good things to happen because he's in our lives. Say it again, God is our provider. So God provides everything that we need. How does he provide it? He provides it by his word. God's word brings everything that we need into our lives. It's the power of God's word in us and through us that produces the things that God wants to bring about in our lives. So God gives us the seed of his word to produce the fruit of his kingdom. Uh, I'm expecting something good because God is at work in my life today. His word will not return void. Watch this. His word will not return void, but it will prosper. It will prosper. It will prosper. Everybody say that word prosper. That means it will thrive. It will flourish. His word will prosper wherever it's sent. Another place in scripture said he sent his word and healed them. God's word produces God's results. God's word produces God's results. And so as long as the word is active and alive in me, that which God has purposed is alive in me. God's word is at work in my life. And as I move on the word of God, as I walk and live in the word of God, then I can expect that God's going to do what he said he would do. God is not a man that he should lie. Come on, somebody. See, the problem is we're looking to organizations and we're looking to governments and we're looking to all this stuff for the answer. But the answer is in Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. While, can, while I can appreciate all those things that are in our world, it's not where my hope comes from. It's not where I get joy. It's not where I get peace. I get all of that from the Prince of Peace. So give us this day. There's this expectation that everything that I need, God will provide. John 6, 26. This is a part of this same message that Jesus is preaching as he's teaching people how to pray. Jesus answered them. Truly, truly, I say to you. Whenever, just listen, whenever Jesus says truly, truly, or verily, verily, you need to lean in. Truly, truly, I say to you. You are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of loaves. In other words, Jesus has just fed the 5,000 with fishes and loaves, and he says, you're, feeding, you, you're following me right now for what I can put in your stomach. Then he said, do not work for the food that perishes. Okay. So God's showing us something. We're not looking for things. We're looking to the, the one who provides things. And as long as I'm looking to him and seeking him, then all of my needs will be met. Yeah. Seek first the kingdom of God. I'm not seeking things. I'm seeking the one who provides every good thing. I'm seeking the Lord because I know that when I seek him, the right things will come into my life. Come on, I'm not seeking the stuff. I'm, see I'm seeking the one who created everything. I'm seeking the Lord, not because of what he can do for me, but because of who he is. Is everybody here? I understand who he is in my life. I seek him. I love him no matter where I'm. No, let me take a side step. If I'm seeking God and I love God, then I can understand no matter where I found my, find myself, I can do all things through Christ. That's what the apostle Paul said. He, knows, he said, I know what it is to abound. I know what it is to be up. I know what it is to be down. I know what it is to go through stuff. But I found this out. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm looking to the source. I'm not looking to the stuff. I worship the source and not the stuff. Come on. I worship the source. I, I worship the giver and not the gift. I'm preaching now. I feel it. I said I worship the giver. I don't worship the gift. How many in the church today are worshiping the gifts and not the giver of the gifts? We've got to worship the Lord. Whether we see what we think we want or not, our source is God and he will do what he said he would do. And what he does will always be right. 
It may not be the way we see it or expect it, but God will always bring what is correct. Give us this day. That which comes from you. We don't want it if it's not from you. I don't want any bread that's not coming from heaven. I'm about to get into it. You're about to see. I don't want, I don't want the bread that, that others are trying to give me. I want the bread that comes from heaven. I want the stuff that comes from the Lord. He said, you're seeking me because of what I put in your, your belly. You're, you're looking for the bread. But then he said, do not work for food that perishes, things that pass away. How many of you understand a lot of the things that we're looking for in our lives, those things are fleeting. Those things are temporal. They're not eternal. We always are looking for temporal things instead of the eternal things. But we need to start looking to that which is eternal and not which is temporal. And so this is what Jesus is teaching them. But the food that endures, there's a food that endures. He's talking about spiritual food. But there's a food that endures to eternal life. It's life-giving, which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to, to be doing the works of God? And Jesus answered them, this is the work of God. Come on, that you believe in him who has who believe in who, him whom he has sent. In other words, the work of God is to believe in me. So they said to him, then what sign do you do that we may see and believe you? What work do you perform? Watch this. Our fathers ate manna, heavenly food. Our fathers ate manna in the wilderness. Remember the story? As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Watch this. Now go with me. Skip down. John 6, 48. Watch what Jesus says to them. I am the bread of life. You're looking for bread, but you're looking for temporal things. You're looking for things that pass away. You're looking for things that will not, will not remain. But I'm telling you, I am the bread that fuels your purpose. I'm the one who gives you everything that you need. I'm the one who will nourish you all the way to everlasting life. I am. You're looking for heavenly food, and I'm telling you, I am that food. I am the bread of life. So when he says, give us this day our daily bread, what is he talking about? He said, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate man in the wilderness and they died. That bread was temporal. So it temporarily satisfied them. They ate man in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat it and not die. In other words, when you believe in me, you will not die. Why? Because he's the resurrection and he's the life. Watch. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The bread is my flesh. It is the living bread. I am the bread of heaven. Now listen to what he's saying. Because now when you go back a few verses up where he teaches them how to pray, give us this day our daily bread. What he's talking about is he's talking about give us today that word that comes from you that will cause us to be all that you purpose and designed us and destined us to be. Give us what we need to live the abundant life John 10 10 says the thief cometh but not but for to steal kill and destroy but Jesus said I am come that you might have a life and have it more abundantly so it's the word of God and feasting on the word of God studying the word of God praying about the word that is in our lives it, it is it is cultivating what God has said in our lives that brings us into the fullness of what he's purposed so give us this day our daily bread is this living bread that comes from heaven. God, give me the word today that's going to move me forward. How many of you know we don't need yesterday's bread? Now watch this because Jesus is talking about bread. He says, I am the bread. He's talking about man and he says, I am the true manna. John 6 begins with this. It begins with a question from Jesus to his disciples. John 6, 5 says, where shall we buy bread? 
Jesus then multiplies the loaves, the bread, and the fish and feeds 5,000 plus. This whole chapter, if you read all of chapter 6 of John, this whole chapter is about what kind of bread the people truly need. It's all about the, the bread that the people truly need. The bread that feeds them temporarily or the bread that feeds them eternally. Jesus shows, or Jesus shows us how when we eat the true bread that all of our physical monetary needs are taken care of as well. So when I eat the bread of life, which is when I have the word of God in me, then all of the other things that I need to live in my life, those physical needs are going to be taken care of because I'm seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So what Jesus is teaching us is don't seek those things that you feel like are so important. Just know that God will take care of everything you need as you follow him. Then Jesus gets into this thing where he's talking about clothes and he's talking about the food and all this stuff. He said, don't worry about your clothes. Don't worry about your food. Just seek the Lord. Seek the kingdom of God and food will be there. The clothing that you need will be there. See, we make so many things important. We make them more important than God. And this is what Jesus is teaching. So he says, when you pray. Pray with an understanding of who your source is. Pray to your source and ask for him, Ask for that bread that you need that day that will cause you to live in a, an abundant life. He's not talking about nature's own. He's not talking about wonder bread. He's not talking about a French loaf. He's not talking about Cuban. He's not talking about any kind of earthly bread. He's talking about the word that brings life. Give us, so and when we pray, we need to pray with this expectation that God is meeting us where we are and he's giving us everything that we need by his word and spirit to have everything in our life today that will bring us into the, the tomorrow that he's planned and purpose for us. So we pray with that expectation. Watch this. Everybody understand this. How many of you know we are in a kingdom and it's the kingdom of God? Somebody say that. We're in the kingdom of God. Well, if you understand anything about kings and kingdoms, then you understand it's the king who has a responsibility to make sure that the people have everything they need. So I worship the king, understanding that the king is the one who's providing everything that's needed. That I, what, what Jesus said is, don't work for food. How many of us, we work for the paycheck and what the paycheck will bring to us instead of doing what we do as unto the Lord knowing that as we worship him with the gifts the abilities and the talents that he's given us that first the money that comes is to be a blessing to to his kingdom and a blessing to the world around us and when we have this understanding of the king and the kingdom then we understand then all of our needs will be in place that everything that we need will be met because it's not our responsibility for those things to happen it's the king's responsibility over the kingdom to make sure that his people are taken care of and so as we're worshiping the Lord, as we're seeking the Lord, God's going to take care of us. So I can pray with this expectation, give us this day our daily bread. God, give me that word today that's going to activate something in me that I've not yet seen or heard or experienced before. Give me today that nourishing, life-giving bread that's going to open up my eyes to see. Um, in the temple of God, the temple, as you know, I don't have time to stay here for a long time, but I, I need to say it. The temple, the, the temple in the old covenant economy, the old covenant system uh, had three different dimensions. So you had the outer court, you had the inner court, and you had the most holy place. Well, in the inner court, that was the bread of presence. And there was one loaf per tri tribe. So there was, there was a way that they were to prepare this bread. And it was called the show bread or the bread of presence. And they would lay this bread on the table. It would be laid out from Sabbath to Sabbath. When the bread was to be changed on the following Sabbath, the only ones who could eat the bread were the priests. It was also called the bread of face. Because it is said that when these priests would eat the bread, they would have a, almost like an eye-opening experience, a spiritual experience. So when Jesus says, eat 
of me, what he's showing us is he's the true bread. He is the true bread of presence. He's the one that as we eat him, our eyes are open. As we partake of the word of God, our eyes are open and our ears are open and we begin to see what we've never seen before and we begin to hear what we've never heard before and, and our hearts begin to be enlightened because it's the bread of his presence. It's the bread that opens our eyes to see and our ears to hear when we eat and digest the word of God. The word of God begins to quicken within us things that we didn't even know were there. So Jesus says, eat this bread and my flesh is that bread. Now, when Jesus said this, thousands of people walked away from him. They walked away. They walked away because they thought he was talking about cannibalism. But he was giving them something not physical. He was giving them something spiritual. His word, everybody say his word, is the bread of life. So watch this. In Exodus 16, Jesus goes into this. The people ask him about it. In Exodus 16, we're given the story of manna from heaven. How many of you have heard this story before? This is what they're all talking about. You know, when, when our forefathers were in the wilderness, they gave manna. God provided spirit food, bread, bread from heaven every morning. For six days, they'd go out and they would gather what the Lord put out as it came from heaven. It rained down bread. They would go out every morning. They would gather and they were all together about two liters per every person in their household. And so they would go out every morning and they would gather. Now, here's the thing about manna. Manna would not hold over to the next day. And if somebody tried to cheat the system, I mean, if you know, there's always one in every crowd. If someone would try to cheat the system and say, I'm going to have a little bit more manna than Joe over here next, tomorrow. And so I'm going to put the manna, I'm going to hide the manna. Guess what happened? By the end of the day, the manna would begin to stink and it would, worms would come out of it. They wouldn't be able to eat it because it was only good for that day. Give us this day. Manna is daily bread. For six days... They would get that on the sixth day, they would get double because no food would come on the Sabbath. The only day that the manna stayed good for an extra day was on the sixth day. Okay. I'm sure there's all kinds of messages and revelation that we could pull out of that. But what I want you to hear today is that the, the word that we had yesterday, we need fresh revelation from heaven today that's going to continue to move us forward. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith, now faith. And then it also says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So faith comes by hearing the word, not having heard, but continuing to hear. So there's something that's a now thing that I need. Now I need what comes from you now? I, I need that which is going to move me forward now. I can't live off of what I had yesterday. God, give me something fresh today that's going to continue to take me into the things that you purpose for my life because faith is not coming from what I heard but what I'm hearing. It was good yesterday, but God, speak to me again today. And when I say speak to me, I'm talking about this inner knowing that as we get into the word of God, the word of God paints pictures on the canvas of our heart and our mind. It, it, be, it brings bre daily bread into our life where we begin to feast on it and it begins to change us from the inside out. How many of you have ever heard that you are what you eat? Well, I mean, if, if that was like really literally true, I'd be looking at a lot of ha hot dogs, hamburgers, pizza sitting in here today. What that means is whatever you put inside you will produce results. And you will begin to see those results if you continue to eat wrong things. You will see the results of that which is wrong. And you will see the results of that which is right. If you're eating junk food every day, it may not matter for the first few days. But after you continue to do this daily... 
Say the word daily. As you continue to eat junk daily, all of a sudden you begin to fill off. I think about that, that guy who decided he was going to eat Mickey D's every day and see what it did. And it messed him up. Why? You can't eat junk daily and, be, and believe you're going to get powerful results. You are what you eat means whatever you put inside is what's going to show on the outside. Give us this day our daily bread. That life-giving word, as I feast upon the word daily, I begin to become like the word. I begin to show the fruit of the word. I begin to uh, realize the truth that is in the word as I begin to see the results begin to occur in my life. It may not happen on day one, but as I daily walk in the word the fresh bread that is coming into my life from heaven as i continue to look into the perfect law of liberty which is the word of god as i continue to meditate upon his word both day day and night this is a daily meditation this is a daily walk with the lord can everybody see the theme here it's daily it's daily you know it's like if a person if a person wants to stay strong, they have to continue to do the things that will produce strength. Okay. I can go running every day for a full year and be in incredible physical shape and great heart health. But if I stop, I'm fooling myself to think I'm going to stay in that shape. And then I can get a year past that year, and now I've spent a year not doing anything with only bad habits, and I can tell you about the time that I used to run 15 miles. Y'all don't hear me. But it's not something I'm capable of today. So what we have is we have a lot of people talking about yesterday, but they're not doing what they need to do today to produce the results that they need to walk in tomorrow. And because of that, all we can talk about is Azusa and stuff like that in the church. We talk about a people who prayed and believed and saw results, but yet we don't want to do what we need to do today. To see the results that God is wanting to bring forth in our day and in our hour and in this generation. So when we say give us this day our daily bread, it's this understanding of God, I can't live off of what was yesterday. I have to have you today. I need you. The bread is Christ. So if Jesus said, I am the manna, just like Peter said, the rock that issued Fourth water in the wilderness was Christ. If the rock was Christ, so's the bread. It's all Jesus. So today, in this new covenant, I have to understand that I need Jesus every day. This is how you do the work of God. You believe in the one whom he sent. Every day is me putting my faith and my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say every day. Daily. Daily. And so I won't read about the man. I had that in my notes to read. But one thing that it says is this understanding that they needed this, this fresh bread every day, that it would spoil or go bad if they didn't eat it that day. And then it also said that manna had a sweet taste. It's like sweet. When they prepared it, it was like sweet wafers. It, it had a taste like honey, like honey on your lips. When you read in Scripture, honey is always is always partnered with an understanding of honey is, is, is like a type of the word. And so honey is enlightening. It's enlightening. It's, again, it's eye-opening. So watch this. Jesus tells the people, he is the true daily bread from heaven, which means he is, just like God sent the manna, God sent him. The only bread, now everybody hear this, because what did they have to do in Exodus 16? They had to, every morning, they had to, watch this, the food did not appear on their table. 
I'm going to let that sink in for a second. The people had to go gather it. So when I pray, give us this day our daily bread, I'm also praying with an understanding that this is not going to happen without me doing what God's asked me to do. That I have to go and gather the bread. How am I going to gather the bread? I'm going to open up the book. I'm going to begin to read what is in the book. I'm, I'm going to begin to study to show myself approved. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. I, I'm going to get into the word. I'm, I, I'm going to listen to the word. Listen, when you hear me preach a message on a Sunday, that shouldn't be the last time you hear it. You should go and listen to it at least once or twice again during the week. Not counting the time you heard it on Sunday. Why? Because I'm such a great preacher? Yes. No. No. Because I'm such a great preacher? No. Because I'm a bread deliverer. I'm delivering you bread. And I promise every time you hear the word, you're going to find something new and fresh that day that you need. And the more we meditate upon the word of God and look into the word of God and read the word of God and listen to the word of God, the more we're going to grow and and we're going to be all that God's purpose for us to be. So I've got to go gather the bread because the only bread I'm going to eat is the bread I gather. I feel good. Everybody hear this. The only daily bread you're going to eat is the bread you go get. Every household. Read it. Exodus 16. I was going to read it for you, but I'm not. Exodus 16. Go read it. Every one of them had to go gather for their house. And everyone in their house. You know what that tells me? That even as parents, we have a responsibility to help our children get the word that they need that's going to help them grow. I mean, we know we got to put, we got to put food in their stomach. But yet we neglect that which is spiritual, that which is eternal, and we, we accept the temporal over the eternal. We'll, we'll accept putting food in their stomach, but we won't nourish them, nourish them with life-giving truth from the word of God that's going to help them grow. And help them become all that God's purpose for them to be. Is everybody hearing this? Because I feel like we're still like the people who are just saying, Jesus, fill my stomach. Instead of Jesus, fill my heart. I feel like we're going to get more results if we say, Jesus, fill my heart. With an expectation of as he fills my heart, I will have everything that I need to put in my stomach. I know people who they continue to gather and gather and gather for rainy days. And they gather and gather and they never use it for anything good and then they die. How many of us, we just like to gather, but we don't like to eat what we gather. When it comes to the spiritual food, when you gather it, you better eat it. If not, it won't hold. I said, when you gather it, you better eat it because it won't hold. Have you ever been like me and you've heard the Lord nudge, nudge you and he's put something in your heart and you said, I'll just hold on to that. I'll wait till later. And all of a sudden you get to later and you can't feel the same knowledge that was wanting to really be poured into you. Has anybody ever experienced that? It's like, I wait till later and I'm thinking, well, what was that all about now? And that was God saying, I want to speak to you now, but you said later. No, no, you needed to eat what what I wanted to bring to you in that moment. So we want to gather, we don't want to eat, we don't want to gather also, but we're only going to eat what we gather. Jesus tells the people to feast on his flesh for eternal life. Now hear this, this is both Eucharistic, this is communion, right? Eat my flesh, drink my blood, that's communion, we understand it. So this is both Eucharistic in nature, which, which is this understanding of his body. He's saying the bread is my flesh, which we're all partakers of him, which means we're all members of him. So that's what he's conveying there. It's, again, it's the you are what you eat. As you partake of me, you, you belong to me. You're a member of the body as you eat the bread. So this is an understanding we have as a church as we receive communion. We are citizens of his kingdom and members of his body. 
We're partakers of his divine life. So what he's saying is Eucharistic, but it's not only that. He's also showing how we have to, to be partakers of his nature. We have, we have to, he, he's conveying to us that we should seek him daily to follow him and to learn from him. Daily bread comes as I daily seek. Listen to this. Give us this day is an understanding that all of our needs are met daily through Jesus Christ. I seek Jesus Christ. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable or of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? Why are you anxious about clothing, he asked. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Do you see how clear this message is? My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus our Lord. He is the king. He is the one who provides. He is the one who supplies. So I look to him. I don't, I'm not anxious about where it's coming from because I know that when, when it's needed, it will be there. My brother-in-law took over my father-in-law's business after my father-in-law passed. And he was thrown in the fire. I mean, he's, now he's having to lead this company all of a sudden. He said, but I remembered on days where things weren't going the way that I thought they should go or we weren't selling fish in the, in the numbers that we needed to. How many of you know fish is perishable? So when you get it in, you got to get it back out. He's dealing with perishable food. And so on the days where, the, where it's not moving the way it should, he said he would get anxious. He said, but I remembered in those anxious times how when I went to dad, dad would always tell me, God will provide. He said, so when I got into the mix and dad wasn't there, I, all I can remember is what dad told me on those days is when everything looked like it was a mess, it was going the wrong direction, I just had to remember, God will provide and he said as i just said god will provide he said all of a sudden i saw that god would make a way and all of a sudden someone would buy this amount of fish and this amount of fish and it began to go out because god would make a way and god would provide he said i've got people now uh the part of my organization that i don't even know if they're believers but now they're saying back to me it's okay god will provide because they hear me say it all the time We just got to know God will make it happen. God will provide. If it's not happening, it's not my job to make it happen. It's just my job to love him and seek him and honor him and glorify him and worship him in spirit and in truth. And when it's time, God will make a way. He'll do what he said he would do. He will not fail. He will not fail. He will not fail you. Somebody said God won't fail me. He has it before and he won't do it now. God said he'd do it. Go ahead and believe it. He's going to do it. It may not come when you want it, but it'll come right on time. When you get in the midst of this week, just say, give me, Lord, this daily bread and expect it. And when it doesn't look like it, just keep saying, God will provide. God will provide. Praying for daily bread is asking for God's empowerment, his favor, his blessing. Because all these things come by the word that we feed on. Why do we need the word? Because thy word is a lamp unto my feet. 
light into my path. Your word is like honey on my lips. It's, it enlightens, it opens up my eyes. It causes me to see what I've not seen. I close with a scripture that we read during worship, during our worship time. The Lord is my shepherd. Watch this. The Lord is my shepherd. Say it. I shall not want. He's the shepherd, which means he's going to lead me in the green pastures. He's going to lead me into by, beside the still waters, which is places of rest. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. Watch this. He restores my soul. He restores me from the inside out. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, his way of doing things for his name's sake. Even though I walk even times through the valley of the shadow of death. Watch this. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me. You, watch this. You're not preparing the table. <clears throat> Give us this day. Our daily bread is my expectation that God's preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with all my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Give me this day. Give us this day our daily bread god is my source god is my provider he is the source of every good thing that i need that will bring me powerfully into the into the tomorrow that he's already prepared